like to introduce our next presenter, and her name is Colleen Strang. She is on staff at St. Matthew Parish in Wyndham. And she used to be at St. Thomas Aquinas in Derry, and now she's there. And in both places, she undertook the monumental task of getting whole community catechesis off the ground with other folks, not only by herself. But um, So she's approached this project in two different places from the ground up. So she's going to share and hopefully help you to not be afraid of that. <laughs> okay, Colleen. Thank you. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna start right in with, uh, there is nothing quite as scary as change. Um, I remember when St. Thomas um, first started, this was about 14 years ago, and um, I was handpicked and they said, we'd really love you to be a part of this program. And I was like, oh, I don't know. My Fridays are really full. They were not full at all. I just was <laughs> uncomfortable with change. Um, and I was amazed at how beautifully, actually the program did, did fit into my life. Um, and a year and a half after I was there, I took on the program as a coordinator. Um, so that was about 14 years ago. And then um, last year I began as a family faith formation coordinator at St. Matthew, which had only one COVID year under its belt um, before I started. And so in speaking today, I, I wanted to share some advice based on my joys, my sorrows, my challenges of embarking on a new program, which is now, um, again, I'm, I'm doing this for a second time. Um, it's different, um, and yet um, the things that I want to share with you today are literally things that, um, that I try to ground myself in, that I'm going through right now, the growing pains of a new program. Um, so um, before I begin, the, you know, I just want to review the goal of family catechesis or family-based catechesis is for parents, grandparents, and caregivers, and I use that language because we have all of them. Um, to realize the love of God themselves and to let that love permeate every part of family life. It's based on the faith, it's based on the faith they already have, but many need to more fully see. It's not just a local trend, but a very purposeful move by the broader church to address the reality of disaffiliation. Family-based catechesis arises from four foundational beliefs. And again, these are all things that I remind myself of. The catechesis is lifelong and intergenerational. It's community-centered. It's a partnership between parents, grandparents, caregivers, and the church leadership. It's a partnership. And it integrates Catholic culture into the home, not just during class or Sunday Mass. Family catechesis really invites those parents, grandparents, and caregivers into the task of raising our children in the faith and to walk as disciples. I, as you can probably already tell, I'm a huge proponent of family-based programs. Um, parents, grandparents, and caregivers are their children's greatest and most powerful influencers in their kids' faith lives, and yet often they don't realize how important their role is. They need tools to raise their children in the faith, and they need encouragement, they need reassurance. St. Augustine said, to fall in love with God is the greatest romance, to seek him the greatest adventure, to find him the greatest human achievement. Life with God at the center is an adventure. Parents, grandparents, and caregivers must mentor their children along the way in this adventure. I like the example of driving a car. You can know the parts of the car, you can read the manual, you can read all the rules of the road, but until that young driver gets behind the wheel and starts mentoring with an adult on how to drive the car, what to look for, what are the obstacles, and how do you problem solve, they can't learn to be good drivers. The exact same true is for faith. Parents must be on board and walk the faith with their children if our children are to learn how to be disciples for the long haul. And that's what our goal is, the long haul. Family catechesis invites parents, grandparents, and caregivers into this endeavor, awakening, hopefully, their own faith. 
So this is my advice. Again, things that I try to ground myself with. Um, being at year two, which is really the first real year. Um, I'm, I'm going into my, my second year, and it's the third year of the program um, at St. Matthew. Um, I've really, these are the steps that I'm discerning right now. I'm going through this right now. Um, so it's very fresh for me. So um, I just sort of put together a list of, of advice and things that I remind myself of. One, call upon the Holy Spirit and often. I ask the Holy Spirit to guide me on the, the big questions of the program as well as literally what am I supposed to present on Friday. Oh, please, Holy Spirit, come. <laughs> um, sometimes when I was like finishing up last minute things, my husband would be like, wow, coming in hot. And I'm like, yeah, well, the Holy Spirit got here late, but he came. <laughs> so he does come. He does come. And, and so have faith there. Um, the second piece of advice, create a solid foundation as to why you're committing to a family-based approach and flesh out a vision, goals, and objectives for the program. The church is up against heavy forces when it comes to disaffiliation. They are real. Family catechesis addresses many of these forces in ways that old models fall short. So ground yourself in the whys of family catechesis, which is evidence-based. It's not just on a whim. This isn't just a, well, somebody thought it was a good idea in a back room. Um, there's, I have immersed myself in, in so many articles and research papers recently, um, and it is, it is evidence-based. We need those parents on board, parents, grandparents, and caregivers. Share that rationale on your website, on your registration materials, and in the, your September launch, maybe even at every parent meeting. Why are we doing this? Why is this different? Because you're going to meet resistance, as many of you already have experienced, I'm sure. Um, and, and convey why this is truly the domestic church is so important. Nothing motivates parents more than doing what, they, what, what is best for their children. At St. Matthew, we include that rationale on our registration forms, like a, a page one and um, it really sort of gives the foundation and the basis for why we're doing what we're doing. Number three, be bold and enthusiastic in preparing your families for change. Again, let's go back to the word adventure. Families will feed off this enthusiasm um, and, will, and will know this bold decision is something that you believe in and you're committed to. So prepare them, perhaps you could prepare them you know, for the year before um, the launch, one approach would begin um, to, to launch a pilot program or a focus group. Um, this, this can foster families getting used to the idea, um, but that's not the only way. St. Matthew, we, we, because of COVID, they started with um, a family-based program and off we went. Um, so, so there's no one way to do it. Um, but publish ideas about the program well in advance. We include all the dates, times, everything in our registration information. Um, and it, I think it helps ease anxiety about this new thing, you know, so they know what to expect as best they can. Um, the program itself. Squarely focus the program on the adults. This is a bold statement, but it's fact. The adults are the essential players in transmitting the faith to our children, and they need the tools to do this. Um, not to say that our programming doesn't include children. Of course it includes children, and it, of course the content that they're getting is important. But the reality is, um, little plug here, um, I took through the McGrath Institute, um, which, which the diocese um, supports, um, I, I took a class called the Art of Catechesis. Phenomenal, just a little plug there, a phenomenal, phenomenal class. Um, and one of the things that they talk about is the thread of memory and the thread of memory of what we pass on to our children. Unfortunately, we are, that thread of memory is getting jeopardized with, fam with, with parents who unfortunately were poorly catechized, and I was one of those. Um, so so we, need to, we do need to focus on the adults. We do need to realize that they are, in many cases, poorly catechized. Um, so we need to invite them in. Carefully consider the materials that you would like to use, knowing confidently that no program is perfect all by itself. I have yet, I've tried 
so many materials in the last 14 years. Um, I don't think anything stands perfectly by itself, and that's okay. Our job is to partner with parents, and our job is to help facilitate how they can use those materials to get the most out of them. My other suggestion would be to network with other parishes to see how they have implemented their program materials, um, and then be decisive about what you select. I would highly discourage hopping from one set of materials to the next. It will give your parents whiplash. Um, and and we, you need time to sort of settle into a program and to see what's working and what's not. Reinforce the six tasks of catechesis. I actually have this posted behind my desk on the board because I feel like all too often I find myself focusing on the content of the, the knowledge, but we're not just giving knowledge, right? We're giving knowledge of the faith and that's important, but we're lighting, we're lighting faith lives in people. Um, so just as a reminder, um, the six tasks of catechesis, they, um, the tasks develops a knowledge of the faith, promotes knowledge and the meaning of liturgy and the sacraments, fosters moral formation in Jesus Christ, instills a prayer life in Christ, enlightens the Christian how to live in community and to participate actively in the life and the mission of the church, and encourages a missionary spirit that prepares the faithful to be present as Christians in society. So it's important to remind ourselves, are, I literally think through, like, am I offering opportunities for all of these things? And if I'm not, where, where can I strengthen my program? <clears throat> Don't underestimate the power of community and hospitality. Um, and by the way, when I talk about hospitality, just a little plug. <laughs> We do offer pizza, and we get our pizza from Domino's, and you can get like the medium pizza deal and a 501c3 discount. It's the cheapest pizza around, just an aside. Um, but don't underestimate the, the power of community and, and hospitality. Sometimes you might have somebody who walks in the door who is so fragile, who's, who's never, they, they're used to doing the drop off. And they're now being asked to come in and participate and talk to people. They can be exceedingly fragile. So we want to, to um, facilitate connections with other groups. Community is essential to the tasks of catechesis and living in that community. So um, find ways to do, you know, sometimes we would do at the tables like a, an icebreaker question that facilitates conversation fun games and opportunities for adults and families to connect with each other and to faith share. Um, the next piece of advice, build a team and ask for help. Sometimes when we try to do it all, which, which we often, many people in this room I'm sure, do, um, we actually squash what other people may be called to. So remember that, you know, sometimes when we back off, we invite other people in and allow them to, to their calling. So we start with small manageable tasks. Again, at St. Matthew, I'm at the beginning stages, so we don't have a huge team right now. So this past year, I just had families sign up to help set up and clean up. Next year, I'm coming for them. <laughs> um, you know, you see the people sort of rise to the top and who maybe are a little more willing. And so my goal is to build that team. Um, slowly um, so so but build a team and ask for help I know that's hard sometimes but it's important and then it has to be fun think about what you would want to do we we have um, Friday night um, family sessions we also have we, next year we'll have a Sunday family session but a Friday night session especially I always say like the parents claw their way to Friday they deserve dinner and like you know a chance to have fun with their family not to say that you don't offer them prayerful experiences and things like that, but, um, but really engaging them in fun. So some examples might be a trivia-based game, um, inter interactive storytelling, acting out a parable as a large group, those types of things. Once your program is running, some of this is like really where I'm at right now, be patient with parents and remember where your parents are coming from. 
This is a major culture shift for a lot of families. Um, they often feel ill-equipped to pass on the faith, and they need tools and reassurance. Um, most importantly, you know, they are, they are the, in the most powerful position to influence their children, and so we need to help foster that for them. Um, and I think empowering them without overwhelming is the balance. So, so inviting growth is sort of my mentality versus you must do blah, 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 blah. But really inviting growth um, is the name of the game when I, as far as how I approach it. Consider tools by which parents, grandparents, and caretakers can measure their success. Um, I had just read an article um, which I, it's about disaffiliation, and it was a master's um, paper, and um, they, they basically did check-ins um, in December, sorry, in September, December, and, um, and May, and this, these types of questions can measure growth. So do you talk about faith as a family? How often do you pray together as a family? How often do you attend mass? Um, and that can give you, that tool can give them a tool to measure, oh, we've grown in faith, um, but it also gives us a tool to see is there efficacy. Um, so, so that's um, one of the things that I found on my, I did a survey, which I'll talk about in, in a little bit, um, but we did a survey, and in my survey, you know, I had a lot of, there was a lot of resistance and a lot of like, when are we going back to CCD and COVID's over? Like, you know, why can't we just be in, you know, the kids can't be in person. Um, and so you have to, you know, distinguish some of that. Um, but one of the surprises was, you know, the question was, um, how have, have you grown in your faith? Or do you speak about your faith more? And that answer was 68.8% said yes. And so that was like a huge win. You know, they don't necessarily see that because they can base it on their workbooks and their success of their workbooks. Um, but, but if they're talking about faith more, that's a huge win. That's an enormous win. Be patient with yourselves and find a balance between committing to the program design and evolving as, as is appropriate for the program. So at St. Thomas, 14 years ago, the program was, was an optional program. It was set up in half-hour segments. Um, it was, the lessons were very loosely based on what was being covered in the workbooks. Um, it was very, very free form. Um, offered faith formation, you know, uh, faith experiences, prayerful experiences, fun, singing, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and slowly it evolved to a program once they had a team, um, we were able to incorporate more of the model that we heard about, um, about with the Emmaus um, program, where um, we had a whole group beginning, and then we do age or grade-based pullouts, and then a, a closing. Um, and that's kind of where St. Thomas is now. So, so really think of, think of it as a work in progress and that you're evolving. Um, but be patient with that and... Um, be, be really try to discern when it's time to change something or tweak something and making sure that you really give it a, an honest try. Um, so often we can be like, well, that didn't work, and we want to switch to a different thing. Again, we don't want to give our parents whiplash. We want them to be able to sort of get a, a feel for what's going on, how the program is moving, and then sort of evolve the program slowly. Invite feedback from your parents. This can be difficult. I'm going through it right now. Um, if you conduct a survey, be thoughtful about the questions that you're asking. Really consider what you want to learn from the survey. Um, and then you must weed out the feedback that's nudging you to alter the program from the feedback that suggests that parents are struggling with the change or feeling overwhelmed. Um, and so that's hard. That's really hard to do, um, to kind of weed out those those, those responses. Um, I recently did a survey um, through Google Forms. It was, I was able to send it out to the entire registration list. So it didn't, it wasn't based on just who showed up that session. Um, but I invited people to, to do that. And um, 
it was free and it was anonymous. So I had searched around for some other platforms, um, but I like free and we really wanted anonymous. So um, the other thing is just, you know, be open to the surprises from the feedback. You know, one of the things that it was a little nugget, but I was like, I, I loved it was um, so one of the parents had said they really enjoyed seeing the kids faces light up when we did sort of like this trivia thing and the kids were so excited because they had answers. They, they had responses and the parents were able to see how excited they were and that they were engaged. Um, so, so again, you know, sometimes the feedback is difficult, but sometimes you get these like these little nuggets that you know, okay, they, they are getting it. Um, but, but sometimes we have to reframe their understanding of success um, and that it's beyond just a workbook. Um, lastly, strive to be open-minded and act with humility. This one's hard. Um, sometimes we can dig our own heels into the ground about what we think is, is right and effective, and sometimes we need to relinquish those, those preconceived notions and be open to where the Spirit is calling us, because sometimes parents or, or other ministers may have a great idea that we just didn't even think of. Um, so really, um, you know, be open-minded and act with humility. And just to conclude, there's nothing, again, as scary as change. We don't like, it. we're resistant to change, that's fact. Um, but both for families and for the, those who minister to the church, this is hard. And we need to acknowledge with parents, you know, yeah, this is hard. This is, this is difficult. We're asking more of you. Um, but the beauty of our faith that we seek to transmit is in the family, as messy as it is when God is invited. And that's what I have. Does anyone have any questions? So um, at St. Matthew, we offer, um, we have two sessions right now. We have two sessions on Friday. One is an earlier session and then a later session, which seems to accommodate both groups. How early? Um, 5.30 to 6.30, because then we get the littles, the younger ones that are in bed by 7, um, and then 7 to 8. And so right now, it's one. our family sessions are one hour. Um, and then we also have our parent session, our adult sessions, which, which are a different nights. Um, the family sessions are all together um, at this point. That's kind of where we're at. Um, and we will be adding a Sunday morning family session this next year because I was terrified that we weren't going to have enough space. <laughs> but also the Sunday would accommodate, you know, sort of that hour slot in between masses. So um, there was definitely requests for that. And um, so we're hoping that that will be a good um, fit for some families. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very, very much.